The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Today I would like to present a finite model to study the role of shrinkage strain causing early age cracking uh, in cast in place concrete bridge deck. Uh, two other contributors are Tarbius Mohammedi and uh, Chris Foley. Uh, Tarbius is my previous PhD student. She just graduated in summer and currently she's working as a structural engineer uh, in a precast engineering consulting company. And Chris Foley is my colleague at the Marquette University. Okay, I will uh, do a brief introduction about early age back cracking and uh, discuss the parameters we found from literature uh, which believe to contribute to the back cracking. Then uh, show the bridge superstructure configuration which our finite element model is based on. Uh, after that, so the detail of this finite element model, also the assumption for this model, uh, then discuss the results, finally the conclusion. Uh, in past two to three decades, especially after uh, 1980s, especially starting as in 1990s, uh, uh, bridges saw more and more uh, early age cracking. Sometimes the cracking appears even just after construction or before it opened to traffic. Uh, so because this problem, many research already done for this area, and we read the literature and found several parameters contributed to this phenomena. First is the material properties, including the concrete uh, compressive strength, uh, water cement ratio, how much uh, cement used in the mixture, add a mixture, and aggregates. And one of uh, many researchers believe that because the higher strength used in current uh, bridge deck construction, the higher strength of concrete uh, normally require larger amount of cement in the mixture and a low, lower water cement ratio. That may increase the shrinkage of the concrete contributed to cracking. And the second parameter many researchers recognize is the site condition. That means during construction, uh, the environment of that construction site, including the temperature, uh, relative humidity, wind speed, all those may affect the evaporation rate, may cause some larger shrinkage, eventually cause cracking. For the superstructure character, uh, some researchers found that the bridge deck sitting on the steel girder uh, had more cracking than the concrete girder. That may contribute to different uh, thermal uh, temperature uh, expansion. Uh, the continuous support beam showing more cracking than the simply supported beam. That's made due to the negative moment on the top of the support, interior support. And the skew definitely affect the stress in the deck and may introduce more cracking. A larger trapping load cause larger stress, so may introduce uh, more cracking. Also, as, as I mentioned, the construction age, the construction uh, before 1980s, the bridges has less um, cracking than modern bridges. So this is the bridge we choose for modeling. It is uh, a bridge in Highway 151 in, in Wapong, Wisconsin. Uh, this bridge is very typical highway bridge uh, in Wisconsin. Uh, it, it including two uh, pre-stressed, pre-cast concrete girder. Then the bridge deck is cast in place bridge deck including uh, normal uh, coated reinforcement. Uh, this bridge Found the cracking shortly after bridge opened to the 
traffic, we can see majority cracking happen on the top of interior support. That's made due to the napkin moment. Also, uh, additional cracking sewing in the skew area. On the top of this picture, sewing the DOT drawing for the bridge profile. And uh, for the skew, it's not easy to model in the fan element software, especially for different uh, shape of the element at the, at the edge. So we use the step model. That means we shift the part of the deck uh, for 1.5 meters for each uh, good location. Therefore, the skew angle is a little bit different from the original bridge, but it, we, we believe it does not affect too much on the final result. Uh, in the middle of the support, there's a concrete diaphragm, and uh, between uh, supporters, that means in each band, at a third point location, uh, there's a steel diaphragm. So when we built the model, first we uh, used two-dimensional element to create the cross-section of this bridge deck. Uh, then used the uh, extrusion in the Z direction to create the 3D model for the whole bridge. Uh, the steel diaphragm is modeled by uh, the link element, which has same uh, flexural and uh, longitudinal stiffness as the real diaphragm in the bridge. So here is the 3D model for the concrete girder. For the concrete diaphragm at the interior support, only we try to model the real uh, concrete diaphragm, then we find is relatively difficult in the geometry, also for the element connection. So we change to just use the constraint at the girder end to represent the constraint come from the concrete uh, diaphragm. For this one, because in the real uh, bridge, the diaphragm it has the same angle as the skew, but for the constraint, it, it only go to x di uh, the x direction so actually in the y direction, so that the constraint is stronger than the real diaphragm may cause a little bit higher stress in the bridge deck during the analysis. Uh, the focus is on to study the string shrinkage effect on the deck cracking. So we use Astor 2010 shrinkage equation to model the shrinkage in the concrete deck. For this equation, we need to consider four Parameter first, the KVS considered the volume to surface ratio. Based on the geometry of this uh, bridge, this KVS equal to one. The second one considered the relative humidity effect. Uh, I will talk about it in following like, following uh, slide. Then the third one is the KF considered the initial uh, the concrete compressive strength at initial loading, because we didn't know that value, so we used the code recommended 80 percentage of FC prime. For FC prime, for this bridge stack is 5 KSI, therefore this KF equal to 1. And the last one considered the maturity of the concrete that's affected by the days. In following slide, I will show the a table showing the KTD change with the days. So first consider the relative limit effect. Uh, Again, we didn't know the surface relative humidity during the uh, bridge construction because we did this research two years after this bridge was constructed. So we used the ASTO uh, map to find in Wisconsin area the surface relative humidity is 70 percentage. We drew the hole through the deck to find the center relative humidity is higher than uh, the surface. So we assume in the center, the relative humidity is 80 percentage. It's also close to the measured value. Some researchers believe the shrinkage in the bridge stack has a linear relation from the top to bottom. Some researchers believe the top surface and the bottom surface should have same shrinkage. Because our research is focused on the early age shrinkage, at that time, uh, the bridge the formwork is still sitting at the bottom. So we believe the linear relation for the relative humidity from top to bottom is reasonable. 
So we use the 70 percentage at the surface, 80 percentage at the center to establish the linear relation. Um, for this bridge stack, we use three layer of element to model. Therefore, we need to get the, at the third point location for the parameter for shrinkage, uh, that humidity effect, therefore for the shrinkage change. So the KHS based on the equation, based on our assumption, we can find the KHS at different location from top of deck to bottom of the deck in this table. And the KTD uh, is changed with the date. So inputting in the astro equation, we can find a KTD from day one to day 14. Uh, including all those parameters, we find the shrinkage change from first day to two weeks as shown in this diagram. It would be nice if we can apply the shrinkage directly to finite element model. However, the ANSYS cannot accept that loading, but it can accept the temperature loading. So we use this equation. Instead of applying the shrinkage, we apply the temperature change. If we select the reasonable alpha and the corresponding delta T, we can uh, achieve the target shrinkage in the in the model. So based on the shrinkage value, uh, we can find the delta T for each day for each location, which delta T we should apply on the model. And we simply, for each day, we run the model to input a different uh, temperature, then find the stress, then we redo the uh, model to apply a different Delta T for second day and until 14 days. Uh, for the linear analysis, uh, Young's modulus will have significant effect on the model result. So we use this one to get the concrete strength change for the first 14 days. Actually, we test the concrete uh, with same mixture design as the concrete used in that bridge. We test uh, day one, day two, day three, and day seven, day 14. Then in between, we do the interpolation to generate the concrete strength change. For Young's modulus of concrete, we use ACI equation for SI unit to find a Young's modulus for a different day for concrete, then input in, in the model. Additional assumption we made is first, the rebar was neglected because we do linear elastic analysis. And uh, we also only reach to the first cracking stress. Therefore, the rebar does not have significant effect on the uh, analysis result. The sack weight of bridge deck, when the concrete is placed for the deck, at that time, sack weight already applied to the girder. Also, at that time, the deck is in plastic uh, state, is supported by the formwork. So we believe the sack weight of concrete deck itself does not have effect for following um, shrinkage strain. And a shrinkage strain is modeled by the temperature change. Uh, in order to avoid the temperature expansion affect the girder, because the girder already uh, made and placed way before the deck. So we set the coefficient of thermal expansion for girder to zero. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So we choose uh, the, this one showing the longitudinal stress contour on the top of deck. We choose the area on the interior uh, support and select nine points to get the stress and do the analysis. Those nine points for the odd number is exactly on the top of girder, but the even number is, on, is in between the girder on the top of the deck. Then we get this table for each day, and we find that um, for the uh, odd number, that means that the data on the top of the girder has a larger stress than the, uh, the deck in between. That's reasonable because on the top of girder is subject to larger constraint. And we get the average stress for those nine points, we can find that for the first three or five days, we have larger stress than the later days. It's also reasonable because the driving shrinkage majority happened in the early age of concrete. Then we add or uh, superimpose those uh, stress to get 
the cumulative stress for each day. Then we compare with motives of rupture. This is one for SI unit. Also, the 10 percent is of compressive strength. That to represent the tensile strength. We find that at day nine, the cumulative average stress is larger than the 10 per- 10 percent is of concrete compressive strength. If we use that as a tensile strength for concrete, the deck would crack at a day nine. If we use modular rupture as a tensile strength, uh, that will happen at day 11. Therefore, we conclude that for this model, for this bridge, uh, driving shrinkage may cause cracking around 10 days of the life of the bridge deck. Uh, it all, this diagram is showing the longitudinal, st- the transverse stress on the top of the deck. If that is large enough, it may cause longitudinal cracking. Uh, the magnitude of this stress is much smaller than the longitudinal stress. Therefore, it's lower chance to get longitudinal cracking just due to the uh, driving shrinkage. However, if that add other parameters, such as the traffic load introduced stress, the temperature load introduced stress, that may accelerate the cracking, causing the longitudinal crack. So this research we use um, as the model to model the shrinkage, also use linear interpolation from top to bottom to get the shrinkage at different location. The shrinkage strain is modeled by the equivalent temperature loading applied in the finite energy model. And the model shows that joint shrinkage itself may cause early age cracking in the bridge stack. For this specific bridge, for this specific model, it may cause cracking around nine to 11 days. And this research was supported by Wisconsin Highway Research Program. And uh, thank you for your attention.